Mr. Moss Academy now. I'm already here because it's a great place, great friends, great people. But you won't want to miss the next event here, which is Academy, starting from the 30th of June to the 6th of July. You can come here from any destination. This is Tallinn Airport. Glad to be here and see you there. Welcome to Academy. Hey. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, so, today in Tallinn we are just having some fun, but we are taking also the chance to introduce the conference session for Academy. So, what I have here is the program you can find on academy.kd.org as usual. So the conference sessions have just been announced with part of the keynotes and uh, so I would like to do an introduction of some of the talks, actually all of them, that will be presented in the weekend. So let me remind you that in, during the weekend we're going to have the conference sessions, so technical talks aimed towards the community and new users and companies, whereas during the week we're going to have the workshops. Uh, so let's start. Um, the first talk we have is A New Hope, OpenKDE Devices presented by Aaron Sego. So you probably know that Aaron is behind the effort of Vivaldi and Plasma Active. So if you're interested in the KDE tablet and mobile area, you probably don't want to miss this talk. The second talk is about accessibility, presented by Frederick. So Frederick is a very close friend of mine, so I'm really glad I can introduce him here. Uh, and Frederick has been working on the Qt support for accessibility. So he's going to introduce us to what he has done and what we have done in KDE for making our desktop more accessible to several categories of users. Uh, the third talk, the third talk is really interesting, is about KDE Connect. Uh, KD Connect is a new program for companies which will be introduced at KDE Academy this year. So if you are the owner of a company or you are in a good position in a company, consider attending this talk because we're going to tell you how you can get involved into KDE with your company and how your company can benefit from KDE and vice versa. Uh, and uh, it's going to be presented by Augustine, who is the new board member of KDE and is also the guy behind the effort of KD Connect. So, the fourth talk, Building Accessible Systems, Accessibility in Practice, by Peter Grash. Now, Peter has been developing Simon, uh, which is the speech recognizer for KDE. Uh, another great talk about accessibility. Accessibility is a great focus of this year in KDE. Uh, even in Google Summer of Code, we did a lot of effort in accepting projects, talking about accessibility. And Academy will have a, its very important part about accessibility as well. So, this talk is leaning towards... Um, our effort in bringing accessibility into KDE as a first-class citizen. So another talk which is actually like every other talk in here because all of them are awesome, another talk you don't want to miss. The fifth talk by Mirko, uh, Companies are Community. Uh, this talk is probably one of my favorites because uh, it's probably going to concentrate on the differences and the uh, similar things which are between companies and communities and how a community can be run as a company and a company as a community. It's a very important topic because it's something I really care about. So trying to bring the open source mentality into companies themselves. So this is probably one of my favorite talks. And Mirko of course is an awesome speaker so this is probably in my top 10 list. The next talk, Defensive Publications, Ensuring Freedom of Use in the Open Source Community. So licensing and the freedom of publications and uh, patents and whatever we see these days is in an, an incredibly important topic and I'm really glad that somebody, uh, namely Rafi, is going to talk about this at a company. So if you're an open source developer, there are a lot of things you probably don't know and I don't even know which we should care about. And this talk is probably a great way for getting introduced to that. So the next one, by Volker, Domain-Specific Debugging Tools. Uh, now, Volker is known for his involvement in KDP and is probably going to introduce us into some enterprise-level development. So, I mean, another talk which is great, but I'm just going to say that every talk is great here because, wow, we have so many awesome speakers and so many awesome topics. The next talk is a co-hosted talk by Eva and Fenia about Plasma Active and Contour. So, how Contour became Plasma Active, the next step of the mobile platform. So, Eva is behind Basiscom, the company who is supporting Plasma Active at the moment, and she's probably going to talk about how uh, their new interface design for Plasma Active named Contour has become the real interface in the end. So, Contour is um, showcasing the use of Nepom connectivities for empowering Plasma Active. So, another very interesting talk, especially if you're interested in the device spectrum. Next, Plasma Active again, great. How the Plasma Active Human Interface guidelines make the life of developers and users easier. Well, do I need to say anything else about that? <laughs> but um, Again, I want to stress the fact that uh, having a talk about HHZs is a very important and the Human Interface guidelines is something which is usually not getting the attention that it should. So, 
I love this. This is again one of my favorite talks because it's one of the things I usually miss uh, when talking about development and in, even in the SISON conferences. So that's a great talk by Thomas, and uh, um, I really think that everybody should attend this talk. How to make your comment visible is the next by Marta. So Marta has been working on the commit to jest if you've been following uh, dot.kd.org. And um, her work on the comment digest is amazing. The comment digest is one of my favorite things inside KD. Uh, and it's also great to know how your comments can be useful to other developers. Uh, comments can be also used as documentation. And many people look at the comment logs and extract valuable information. So again, attend this talk and improve your commenting skills because everybody needs it. Next talk, KDEV Foundation for the Community, introduced by Sebastian and Lydia, two of the board members. So, well, KDEV is the foundation, the non-profit foundation behind KDE. And this talk is going to introduce you to the structure, to the purpose of the foundation and how you can get involved, how you can become a member if you have the uh, right skills and the right dedication for doing that. So, again, if you are not familiar with the KDEV and its goals, please follow this talk, like any other talk in this list. And now for my favorite topic, KDE Frameworks 5. Uh, we have two talks for KDE Frameworks 5, uh, one from David and one from Kevin, which are the two people basically uh, managing the whole transition. So KDE Frameworks, if you don't know about this, is the new effort for bringing KDE Lips into a modularized structure. So uh, KDE Lips in the future will be split in several modules, allowing uh, third-party application developers to take advantage of KDE Lips in an easier way. Uh, the first talk is towards uh, application developers. In fact, it's called KD Frameworks 5 for application developers. So if you are not part of the Frameworks uh, effort yet, or if you are looking into uh, using KD Frameworks 5 yourself, this talk is going to introduce you to the differences and to what didn't change, which is a lot actually, in Frameworks 5 and how your application can be ready for it now. And this talk is going to be introduced to you by David Ford. So, I mean, David doesn't need any introduction, I guess. And the next, by Kevin, who doesn't need introduction as well, is the community experiment. So Kevin is going to talk about how the community handled this framework effort. And uh, most of all, Kevin has been trying to do uh, some kind of project management, which was uh, really hard to do, for bringing together all uh, the framework maintainers, trying to do some schedules and trying to organize the, the project in a very different way than we are used to in KDE. And uh, he's going to bring up to the table everything which has happened, the good things, the bad things, and the things we're going to improve. So very interesting also if you're interested in how a project's, community projects can be managed. And Kevin did a great work. Next, KD releases of Just Work by Jaren. Well, again, uh, the release topic is very important to me. Uh, I'm not really involved in the release team and uh, uh, all of the things which are needed for releasing a new version of KD, but uh, it's very important to, getting, to be getting up to speed on how to release your software properly, how to make KD releases fruitful if you're actually a developer. And so this talk is another of my pinned talk, which I want to follow, mainly because uh, I really need to grasp more knowledge on this topic, and I think Jaron is probably the best guy for talking about this. So again, it's an invitation. If you're a KD developer, you probably want to attend this talk. Next coming, localizing software for multicultural environments. Great. Localization and internalization is really important. This is another pin talk by me. And, um, well, I want to stress again the fact that um, it's kind of related to accessibility in some ways, but uh, even if it's slightly different. But localization and internationalization is such a long word. E18M, for those of you who understand, uh, is very important and, of course, it's something that every one of us should care about. So again, if you didn't care about internationalization before, if you are looking into making your application better from this point of view, please follow this talk because it's going to be very useful. On a similar topic, the next talk is called Making Multilingual Wikis a Reality by Anne and Nicholas. Now, wikis are a great source of knowledge for users and developers, but of course, the uh, internationalizing and uh, localizing wikis is very difficult, of course, because the user-based contribution doesn't allow for easy translations. And I'm really interested in hearing what Anne and Nicholas have to say on this topic, so this is another favorite of mine, because it's uh, really a challenging topic and I really cannot wait to hear what they have to say about this. Next, messaging for free software groups and projects by Deborah. Now, this is another talk that I really wonder 
what we, we bring to the table because it's another topic that we really um, somehow don't give the right importance to KDE yet. So, well, again, this is another pin for me. And again, it's really great, I think, for developers and for part of our communities to find out about new things and things we are not considering as much as they could be considered. Next, back on Plasma Active, freeing the device spectrum by Sebastian. So, Plasma Active, of course, as you probably know by now, is the fourth of KDE for bringing a new interface to, the, to tablets and other devices. And Sebastian is probably going to talk about the devices we are targeting and the final mission and goal of Plasma Active, so another great talk here. Of course, we don't want to miss Qt project update by Tiago. So Tiago is uh, one of the main Qt guys who is also very involved in KDE and he's going to give us a heads up on what's happening in Qt, what's about to happen in Qt 5 and uh, how KDE can benefit and contribute to it. So, KDE developer, this is the list. So next coming, the future of packaging KDE SC apps on Windows by Patrick and Patrick, Patrick Sprendrain and Patrick Warref. So, um, this is another pin talk for me, although I don't use Windows anymore, but I really care about getting KDE ready on Windows. And of course, uh, packaging and developing apps on Windows can be tricky, and uh, although our software compilation is somehow cross-device, cross-platform and whatever, you probably need to change something in your applications for making the Windows and Mac experience better. So, if you're an application developer, I really think that you should attend this talk hear what's coming on, on about packaging and learn from the two Patricks how you can help them to make your application available on Windows as well. Now we're approaching the end. The next talk by Nuno. Uh, the more we do, the more there is to be done. This title is tricky and I didn't ask Nuno what he was intending to talk about. And this probably makes me want to pin this talk because I'm really looking forward to what Nuno has to say about this. I mean, Nuno is a great speaker, he has great ideas, he's one of my our most known artists, and I really cannot wait to hear what he's about to say. So this is something which really interests me. So next coming, uh, for closing, we have two talks about window management, and uh, for uh, starters, we have Martin, the KWIN developer, or Quinn developer, talking about the window manager construction tools. Now Martin is probably our main guy for window management and all of that and uh, window management is becoming an increasing killer feature of KDE. KWIN is just amazing. I don't know how I can live without KWIN these days. So I'm really interested in what Martin has to say here. And uh, of course this is one of my pin talk. But last but not least, actually one of, if not the talk which interested me the most, is about Wayland by Michael. So Wayland, choosing a better input metered architecture. Wayland is what's probably going to be the X11 replacement, so a different uh, uh, windowing system for our desktop and for Linux in general. So it is great that KWIN and Qt already support Wayland in some ways, but most of all, I love the fact that somebody is talking about Wayland itself, because I think that this is a very interesting topic for KDE, and it's going to be one of the main challenges for the years to come and for our desktop environment. So, I'm afraid this is the end. I wish there were more talks, but I guess there are actually several. And well, all of them are just amazing, and I really hope that I got you interested with all of that. So, getting back on the topic again, our main topics this year accessibility, Plasma Active and KD Spectrum on devices, localization, and pretty much anything related to KD and all of that. So, guys, I really don't know what to say besides. You don't really want to miss that and see you in Tallinn in June and July. Bye. Hey, so I'm about to leave from my short visit of Tallinn as you can see. Uh, but before that, uh, so yesterday I've been talking about the various talks during the weekend. Uh, now I wanted to give you some words about the workshops. So the workshops will be the part which will happen during the week, so from Monday to Friday. Uh, so what is a workshop? Well, basically it can be pretty much anything. But usually it's the part of the week where hackers get together and start hacking. I mean, we get a lot of work done during these workshops. We do planning. We do coding and of course everyone is welcome so we have more focused workshops like uh, I don't know uh, a specific workshop for uh, plasma mobile for example or a plasma active and more generic workshops for example uh, even outside the code there will be a workshop about KD connect I've been talking about KD connect yesterday so uh, if you are a company uh, if you are a company uh, it's a, another good reason for coming to Academy and not missing the KD connect workshop because I mean there is a lot of that KD can do for companies and uh, the other way around so, uh, well, workshops are uh, usually 
probably one of the funnest part of, of Academy. And uh, it's also a very good way for getting involved in any way you'd like. So just drop by. It's all along the week and it will be also at the IT college where the conferences were. So don't miss it. And of course, uh, well, I mean, uh, Tallinn is a great city, but hotels are running out. And if you want to secure your place, book your flights and your hotels as soon as possible. Because uh, the hotels are almost running out, the hostels are almost full, and the airport, which is right in front of me, is not so big. So you need to book your flights as soon as possible. If you didn't book your flights, do it now. Because you will need it. And we don't want anyone to miss this great event. So guys, I am just saying goodbye to Tallinn. I'm on my way to a different place and I hope to see you very soon and I hope to see you in July. Take care.